It always sounded sketchy to me. I'd recommend you pull out unless you want to find yourself with nothing but left but a nice fat pile of dead. You could have mentioned that beforehand! That was Ooh, fitting. This is killing me! <laughs> the, men's vo the men's deep voices resonated in the cloudy room. As they imbibed alcohol and puffed on their cigars, they conversed mostly about business and money. Hakobo and the rest of the men were a breed known as investors. You might also call them tacticians. They survived on information attained before anyone else by making swift decisions and having foresight. Though instead of flesh and bone, their soldiers were made of ink and paper. To an outsider, this meeting might appear to be a congregation of friends, but in reality they were observing one another, gathering information and anything else they could use to get ahead. At times, money and information were exchanged directly. And when they were no longer of financial value to one another, their relationship would pop like a bubble and dissipate into nothing. But you know, Hakobo, you can't be sure this railroad you're so passionate about is going to bear fruit either. You don't know if it'll get finished. And even if they do connect the tracks, will it really be in any shape for people to ride? It's a pipe dream, this transcontinental railroad of yours. Hakobo went silent, but I am certain this is what was going through his head. You're a bunch of damned imbeciles if you can't see the entire country's put their weight behind this endeavor. This is why you have so much trouble making even a few thousand. At the time, a gra rail ra railway was being built across the breadth of the continent. Construction was spearheaded by two large rail companies, in competition for both prestige and a bigger share of this massive national enterprise. The Union Pacific Railroad Company started building from the east, and the Central Pacific Railroad Company from the west. But government bonds alone were not enough to finance the massive undertaking. By the way, there's been some less than pleasant reports about workers dying on the job for the company you chose, Central Pacific. Oh yeah, how they're using explosives to blast through the mountains. Making quite a bang, they are. But if this gets to be much bigger of a fix, they're not going to be able to continue construction. You should at least put your money in the more sure bet of the two, the Union Pacific. It'll cost you to hire replacement workers, and if we keep kicking the bucket, you're gonna have to have trouble finding more. My goodness. And here I thought you all had spines. You think we're gonna run out of workers just because a few ate it? Ha! Huh. There are so many we don't even know what to do with them all. There's not a chance that well will dry up. And if by some chance it does, all we have to do is scoop up a ship full of blacks or yellows. You won't get anywhere if you spend your time worrying about a few measly laborers. What year did they say this was in? 18... 1869, I think. Okay, because then this might be... I don't remember this well, because God knows I didn't pay attention to this. <laughs> but uh, there was something about uh, uh, like a race between those two, the Central Pacific and the Union Pacific. And I think it was supposed to be from California to Utah. And it was, like, in the 1860s, somewhere around there. Hmm. So we're in America. We might be. I don't know. America. <laughs> I 
This is an endeavor backed by the entire nation. Their deaths are honorable in service of their country. The biggest loss is not of people's lives, but of time. The longer the project takes, the more money it costs, and the less profit we make. What we seek is rapid progress. Even in the methods to obtain it are messy or deadly. <laughs> the other men in the room chuckled uncomfortably at Hakobo's distasteful choice of words. Do you agree with his way of thinking, Master? Perhaps he does have a point in that great sacrifice is necessary to accomplish great things. And it is true that tragedy often lies in the shadow of the splendor of times long past. Furthermore, the way people see the world changes with times, so I hesitate to criticize them too severely. Now, as I'm sure you have already picked up on, he was an investor who had put money into a railroad company. He also possessed several crude oil refineries, riding on the world's second wave of industrial development. The mansion, too, bustled with life in a way it never had before. Dozens of maids, including me, gardeners, chefs, sculptors, artists. At times, we even had writers coming in and out of the house. There was rarely a moment of silence. However, I was not terribly fond of the hustle and bustle, personally. But please do not get me wrong. I am hardly opposed to the mansion being cheerful. It was just... How do I put it? The splendor of the time seemed... Superficial. Heartless. It was as though everyone had, was being rushed along by some unknown, invisible force. Part of it was, I expected, caused by the growing divide between those standing at the top and sitting at the bottom. Or perhaps... The mansion was simply taking after its master. There's no time to waste. Everything is resulting upon the success of this project. Whatever it takes, I will ensure it happens. I need more money and more power. Suddenly, a restrained knock on the door stopped his train of thought. From beyond the door came a woman's voice, gentle as a soft spring breeze. Is it the maid? Uh, I don't think it's her. Pardon me, I have made some tea. <laughs> <laughs> May I offer anyone a cup? When the door opened, it stood, and it stood a beautiful woman with- <laughs> uh, Doing that voice like it makes my nose congest a little. The mates? Yeah, like doing that deep voice for so long. When the door opened, and it stood a beautiful woman with pure white hair. So yeah, now I'm convinced that it's just reincarnation and she keeps coming back. Yeah. It was indeed her. Are you surprised? Or did you anticipate her appearance? Though she was not the same age and dressed differently, the white-haired girl, whom you saw fall into the hands of misfortune in the era of roses, in the era of the beast, was also present in this era of innovation. Furthermore, she was Hakobo's wife. T. I don't recall asking for that. When were you asked to make it? I wasn't. But I had these leaves with the most beautiful aroma. And I thought you might enjoy... Shut your trap and know your place! What do you think we have these maids for? I... Hey, now. No need to treat your lady like that. She was just trying to be courteous. These are my personal affairs. Please keep your comments to yourself. 
His friends weren't sure how to react, but ultimately, nobody stepped up to stop Hakobo. They merely shrugged, tossing glances at one another. Hakobo step stopped over to the white-haired girl. He then grabbed her by the arm and dragged her from the den. What the hell do you think you're doing? I've told you time and time again to stay away from that room unless absolutely necessary. I I'm sorry. But, um, I made tea and... Shut up about the tea already! You think we're having tea parties in there like a bunch of prissy novels? I'm sorry. If you really feel so bad, don't go in there in the first place. Get the hell back to your room. Uh, well, I can see why she wasn't. <laughs> the maid didn't like him so much now. I meant no harm. It's just... I'm your wife. I thought it would be nice if I could do something. Like I've told you, that's not your job. Don't show yourself in front of the other men. I have nothing else to say to you. Got it? Now scram. Six alive. First them, now you. It's driving me up the wall. What is it? I told you to get out of here! Right, but... um... What? When will you, you spend time with me next? It has been some time since we last went out together. But we don't even have to go out. Just having dinner together would... How many times are you gonna make me repeat myself, you worthless tramp? Are those ears only for show? Yeesh. Go back to your goddamn room! My apologies. Go off your feet. This one's so pretty. Mm -hmm. Looking utterly downtrodden, the white-haired girl made her departure. Such a piteous sight she was. As, as he watched her go, Hakopo merely snorted. Just thinking about the way he behaved then angers me. I have little fondness for men who do not treat their spouses with respect. I shall steal them from him and show them how beautiful they are. So as you can see, the white-haired girl was hardly in a joyous situation. She was devoted to Hakopo and tried to do whatever she could for him, but he not only brushed her aside, he did so in an insulting, deliberately hurtful manner. They were far from picturesque partners. Do you wonder then, Master, why she married him? The answer to that question will come to light in time. For now, let us follow her. Looking down dejectedly at the undrunken tea, the white-haired girl walked alone down the corridor. Though its calming scent filled the air, there was nobody around to have their heart warmed by it. Nor was there anyone to alleviate her loneliness. Despite being the master's wife, the maids who crossed her path in the halls said nary a word to her. As a matter of fact, Oh dear, I beg your pardon, madam. Ah, uh, it, it's fine. One even bumped into her, stifling a laugh as she trotted off. In all likelihood, she had done it intentionally. The poor white-haired girl, who had fallen to the floor, stared helplessly at the broken cups. The tea she had made for her husband was forming a stain in the carpet. The maid's behavior towards the mistress of the house was absolutely unacceptable. 
Nonetheless, it was commonplace. All because of the way Hakopo treated her. The more the man of the house acted cruel to her, the less weight her position as his wife held to the servant. Day in and day out, the maids worked busily, offered little opportunity for leisure, so they would naturally have accumulated quite a bit of stress, and she became the target for them to let off the steam. Not directly, but through a more subdued kind of harassment from the shadows. She must have felt quite miserable. I imagine she would have been better off as one of the maids. On the surface and in front of others, they showed respect for her as Hakobo's bride, but behind closed doors they acted very much the opposite. The disparity between the treatment she received around others, the treatment she was supposed to receive at all times, and the way she was actually treated made the abuse that much worse. And furthermore, as you have seen through the other doors, Master, she was a very reserved young woman. She would never raise her voice in reprimand, nor raise her hand in retaliation. I have to get this cleaned up. She extended her spindly finger towards the shards of shattered porcelain. Ah. But even the broken cup seemed to have no concern to spare for her. Its shattered edge cut her fingertip when she made to pick it up. A trickle of warm red blood ran across her unearthly white skin. As painful a sight as it was, it had a sort of taboo beauty to it. The blood spilling from her fingers showed no signs of slowing down. She clenched her hand. Oh, can you take over for a bit? Yeah. The blood spilling from her finger showed no signs of slowing down. She clenched her hand into a fist, let out a sigh, and went back to collecting the shards of porcelain. But when she did... Madam! Madam! What's the matter? Ah, oh, madam, you're bleeding! While all the other maids ignored her, one came running over, shouting to the white-haired girl's side. We need to get that clean and bandaged up. Oh, you don't need to pick that up. That's not your job, madam. It's alright, Maria. There's not much to pick up. It is not at all. Alright. And the rest of you! Why are you just standing there? Your boss's wife is on her hands and knees and you're not even lifting a finger to help her? You disgust me! You tell him. <laughs> Maria, it, it's fine, really. Oh, madam. If you weren't so timid, this wouldn't happen. You're allowed to yell at them, you know. It's alright, really. I'm... Uh, it's, it's my fault. Anyway, we should get that finger taken care of. Let's get you back to your room, okay? Ship it, ship it. <laughs> uh, but the broken cups and the spill... As I said, that's the maid's work. Now, come on, let's go. Uh, okay. And the rest of you? Get this mess cleaned up! She roared like the wind in the thunderstorm. The other maids stood there dumbfounded, watching as she and the white-haired girl disappeared down the hall. But they were soon frowning and grumbling to one another. She thinks she can act all high and mighty just because the master is fond of her.
The woman's name was Maria. She was one of the maids. And she was one of the, And she was the one person in the mansion the white-haired girl could think of as an ally. She's gonna die. <laughs> Though her husband paid her no mind and the maids made her life miserable. Just one person, Maria, treated her with respect and kindness. And I'm sure you can readily imagine just how much of a lifesaver that was for her. I too found myself somewhat relieved that Maria was there for her, and I also shipped them. <laughs> Being a servant of this house, I was also one of the maids working there at that time. However, I was unable to involve myself to any great degree in her fate. <gasps> no! Oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> This meant that there was little I could do to assist her, even in times of pain and unpleasantness. The best I could do was pray that Maria could continue to lead, to lend the white-haired girl her hand. In marriage. <laughs> yes! <laughs> <laughs> and that does it. Thank you, Maria. You're always such a big help. Oh no, no need to thank me. I just do what any good maid should do. <laughs> no one else is in the room, you know. Mm. <laughs> oh, right. Then I can drop the act? Man, I just can't get used to talking all stuffy. <laughs> I'm out there doing my best, but the head maid's still spouting stuff like... Your manner of speaking is improper for a servant. Every single time we meet. Yeesh, come on, just shove it, would ya? You're a damn creep. I like her. Ew. But she's gonna die, I know it. <laughs> no, no, you mustn't speak ill of her like that. Sorry, sorry, slip of the tongue. She just kind of gives me the willies, you know? Speaking of, you dropped a stuffy talk too, madam. Kind of awkward if the only... Kind of awkward if only one of us is acting casual, you know? This is... normal for me. If I attempt to talk like you, I would freeze up out of nervousness. This is... my casual. Mmm, fair enough. Guess that what happens guess that's what happens when you're raised well. I like it though, it has a very regal feel about it. I don't think my upbringing is the only factor. Uh uh But you know, upbringing is important. Worth a whole lot more than money, I'd say. I suppose. Thank you, Maria. You're always so compassionate. You betcha. They don't call me the Virgin Mary for nothing. I practically bleed compassion. Oh dear. Uh, you know, that might be true. I foresee it. <laughs> <laughs> you very well could be the reincarnation of the Mother of God. <laughs> No, 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 you were supposed to laugh at that. It's just embarrassing if you take it seriously. <laughs> Alone in the white-haired girl's room, Maria was acting much more friendly and relaxed as they conversed, as opposed to her no-nonsense attitude in the hallway. The two women were, as you can see, quite close. <laughs> they had crossed over the wall separating master from servant and built a bond of friendship. You know, gal pals. No! <laughs> we don't use that term in this house. Tomodachi. And at some point... Huh? Tomodachis? <laughs> no! <laughs> and at some point, they had begun to speak frankly with one another when no one else was around. 
Maria was the only person in the mansion around whom the white-haired girl felt comfortable being open. I imagine she very much enjoyed these moments of conversation. You wish to know who the head maid was? My, my. Are you sure you want to ask me that, master? <laughs> Some questions are better left unasked, for your own good. It was me! <laughs> I have to say, madam, you have the prettiest fingers. Uh... <laughs> 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 no, no further comment. <laughs> Mine are all rough and dry and nasty. You think so? Mine haven't the slightest bit of muscle. They're about as frail as dead branches. Oh, who needs beefy mitts anyway? I, I still think healthy-looking hands like yours are far more attractive. I love this chapter already. <laughs> What? What's to like about these things? Women all over the world dream of having hands like yours. Slender, feminine, and perfectly cared for. Wink. <laughs> I don't know, just looking at them lights a fire in my Whoa. mind. Whoa! 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 <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> but I can't complain. Makes me want to. Whoa! <laughs> oh, what my. Is are, are we actually taking this turn? I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Makes me want to lick it. I asked one of them. Actually, say, can I lick them? Can I run my tongue up <laughs> and down all ten of those sweet little. Oh! <laughs> Reading it out loud is way different than just reading it. <laughs> now you know how I felt when I had to read a sex scene in this other visual novel I played called Cupid, and the entire time I was trying so hard not to, like, just let out a huge belch. <laughs> Come on, can I? What do you say? S stop that, Maria. Seriously. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm just kidding. No, I'm not let me <laughs> <laughs> And everyone leaves the chat. <laughs> oh Maria, what do we do a problem like you? <laughs> Alright, how did those tea leaves turn out, madam? The ones you imp imported. All the maids just adore it. They can't get enough of that aroma. I'd sure like to get a taste of it, if you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> if you uh, end up with extra, you think you could spare a sip for me? Tea. He. Get it? Tea. <laughs> Bad. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that, that was, um, that was a really bad pun. <laughs> <laughs> that was in the cups I dropped. Shit, I better go lick the floor. <laughs> well, really? Well, ain't that a crying shame. And Hakobo wouldn't have any of it? He wouldn't have Hakobo tea? <laughs> You're you're cutting <laughs> on some thin ice there. <laughs> <laughs> that was actually really good. <laughs> hey, God, why does that man have such a stick up his ass? You went through all the trouble of making it for him, and he was busy. It's not his fault. Busy? You mean playing billiards, drinking bourbon, and puffing a damn cigar? It may look to us like they're just making small talk, but I'm certain that their meeting had some importance to, to their business. It was imprudent of me to try and step into the men's world. That's just not right. 
I mean, you're his wife. Why shouldn't you be allowed in that room? It doesn't bother me. You don't have to pretend. Here's an idea. How would you like to have some of that tea now? We also have some orange marmalade, which you like so much. Add a scoop of that and a tray of cookies and we have the perfect tea time. You're singing the siren song, madam. But you really should be doing that with him. Though I'm not complaining. <laughs> he would not have the tea. I suspect he does not like it. Nah, he's just an asshole. Yeah, I mean, I don't want it to go to waste, so... Madam... I know it's none of my business, and I have no place at all saying this, but... It's not impossible for a woman to file a divorce these days. You don't have to sit down and take it, not one bit. You're pretty, well-educated, and still young. There's hope, even if you do leave him. There are plenty of other men out there. Or Bad women. <laughs> <laughs> you aren't obligated to stick with that arrogant jerk. He's just... very busy right now. There you go again! There was a time when he was kind. Uh. He wasn't like this when we first met. Back then, he was a little awkward, but a kind man. Him? A kind man? Yes, believe it or not. There was indeed a time. Say, Maria, would you mind giving me a little bit more of your time? I'll make some tea and we can talk. Alright. If you're telling me about when Hakopo was decent, I'm all ears. Indeed. Kiss me! <laughs> Damn, she's. This spray is so pretty. Yeah. Oh, you're so pretty. <laughs> but with that, to. Where you've come to the end of the stream for tonight. Thank you to everyone who came on by. Uh, yeah. <laughs> end of chapter <laughs> two. And it's kind of, it's, it's just really very interesting to see how much, so much can change with the different ages that we're going through. Yeah. But I have to say, this chapter is a lot more easy to swallow than the last one. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, ultimately, I have to say I still really did enjoy Chapter 2. For me, the, the only... Was for me, the flaw w really was just the repetition of that word. <laughs> but yeah, I, we are enjoying... Uh, I, I think I, I can say, even for Kanetsu, <laughs> we are enjoying this a lot so far. Yeah. <laughs> Anywho, um... As I'm, we mentioned last time that we streamed, uh, the streams for Fata Morgana will be switching over to Mondays and Thursdays from now on. It's going to be at, um, because I I know on I know on Fridays. Pardon? I I just asked. Do you want to keep it at nine p.m. or do you want to stick to nine thirty? If we can do 9 p.m., that would be preferable on Thursdays, at least, since I don't want to cut into the time in which Lay Filet starts streaming. Okay, yeah, that works for me. Alright, so yes, at 9 p.m. ESTs, then, from now on, Mondays and Thursdays. On Saturday, Kime is going to be streaming We Happy Few. She alternates between streaming We Happy Few and uh, Tomb Raider, right? At some point, she's probably going to start Life is Strange 2 as well. <laughs> and then on Wednesdays, over at Lay Filet's channel, we are doing Final Fantasy 2, the original version, not the uh, fancy DS1 with the upgraded graphics. <laughs> oh. 
that's about it. Do you have any announcements that you want to make? Um, well, I think I'm gonna not stream Root Letter, because it's just... I, I just can't with this internet that I have. It's just not working out. So, um, if you did catch it, or if you did see any, like, past streams that I did, like, two? Two and a half, kind of? Um... I'm going to stick to recording that and posting it on our YouTube channel. So if you were interested in Root Letter, just go ahead and check it out in on our YouTube channel and just look up Root Letter. And we've got quite, like, we've really got, like, a handful of videos. I've got to post the rest. Okay. Yeah. Well, then. Everyone else, have a good night or day, wherever you are. See ya. Oh, no. They're all dead. What happens now? What are you doing, Tess? Oh, God. Maybe they, uh, maybe they had a map or uh, something to tell us where they were going. How far are we going to take as this? As far as it needs to go. Where was this lab of theirs? Oh, she never said. She only mentioned that it was someplace out west. What are we doing here? This is not us. What do you know about us? About me. I know that you are smarter than this. Really? Guess what? We're shitty people, Joel. It's been that way for a long time. No, we are survivors. This is our chance. It is over, Tess! Now, we tried. Let's just go home. I'm not... I'm not going anywhere. This is my last stop. What? Our luck had to run out sooner or later. You going on... No, don't! Don't touch me. Holy shit. She's infected.